Hi, I'm Dan Cordopassi of TSG Multimedia, and I'd like to welcome you to Model Railroading 101. This is our first episode, and I'm going to be in front of the camera, and John Abaticola is going to be behind the camera. That's me. Yeah. So um, you don't see him, but he's there, and he's making all of this look really good. Uh, he's trying to. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> in this series, we're going to talk about some very just basic things about model railroading. I think some of our other programs tend to be geared toward a little more of an advanced audience. And in this series, we're trying to um, just explain things on a little more basic level. So for our first episode, I want to talk about scale. And scale is really nothing more than the proportion of a model to the real world object that it's based on. So it's just the relative size of the, of the model to the real thing. And sometimes you'll hear the terms scale and gauge used kind of interchangeably, but they really don't mean the same thing. And we'll get into that more in a future episode. But basically, gauge is the distance between the rails, and scale is the proportion of a model to the real thing. So um, I'm going to use the term scale because that's really the more appropriate term. Well, we want to make sure we're doing it the right way, Dan. And, and scale is what we're talking about. Right, because scale also applies to any models, not just railroad models. Um, you know, aircraft modelers model in different scales, car modelers model in different scales, people who make models of ships model in different scales. Um, so it's, it's, it's really better to talk about scale because um, it's more universally applicable. And the thing about scale, it's usually expressed as a ratio or as a fraction. And generally, the bigger the number, the smaller the model. So um, if something is like 1 700th scale, which is a scale that some shipbuilders use, that's very small, okay? So you might see a battleship that's, you know, 12 inches long. Because it's, <laughs> it's, you know, which in reality it would be many city blocks long, but, you know, the model is built to a small scale. So um, whereas some, you know, car modelers may model in 124th scale or 125th or even 112th or something like that, which is a lot bigger. Mm -hmm. But then a car isn't as big of a, thing so um but anyway we're talking about trains so i thought i would uh kind of show you some of the more popular modeling scales and so i've got some models here and all of these are 40 foot box cars in the in real life these would all be pretty much the same size um, they do vary a bit in detail but these are all cotton belt cars cotton belt is the nickname of the st louis southwestern railroad SSW, right? SSW, yeah, which was part of Southern Pacific and then became part of Union Pacific through corporate mergers and such. But in any case, uh, the thing to remember is that um, all these cars are basically the same size in, in real life. So I'm going to start with the smallest one. This is Z scale. And this is to a ratio of 1 to 220 or 1 to 20th scale. That means that you would need 220 of these little tiny models to come to the length of a real 40-foot boxcar if you link them all end-to-end. -end. Now, Z-Scale is um, its not one of the more popular scales, but it, it does have a pretty good following. And its it has matured a lot since it was introduced in the, I believe, in the 1970s. Originally, Z-Scale, a lot of the models were European. Uh, Marklin, I think, was one of the first companies to market Z-Scale. I remember that name, yeah. Yeah. And Marklin is a really old uh, company that's been around in model railroading for many years. Anyway, uh, there's a lot more North American equipment available now, and it actually runs pretty well. And there's quite a bit available, not as much available for Z as there is in some of the other scales, but it's growing. And uh, one of the neat things about it is you can build a layout if you wanted a simple oval in a very small space, maybe as little as 18 inches wide, and maybe about, I don't know, three or four feet long. You know, so you could build something in a fairly small table that was still, you know, able to go around in a circle if that's what you want to do. Also, you can have, if you wanted a bigger layout and you wanted to model something like the Rocky Mountains, you could have some pretty impressive looking mountains compared to these little tiny models. So if you like that kind of scenery that seems to tower over the trains, that would be a an advantage of something like Z. Um, disadvantages is if you're one of those people who has trouble seeing or manipulating small things, uh, may not be the best choice. It would give me fits trying to see stuff that small. <laughs> yeah. I would need a jeweler's <laughs> loop or something, you know? Yeah. Yeah. But nonetheless, that's Z. 
Moving up from that, we have n, and n is 1 1 60th scale. And n is actually the second most popular scale in the world um, among modelers. I think it's somewhere around 20% of the people in model railroading are in n scale. And in some countries like Japan, it's really popular. Hmm. Is that why Kado makes so much n scale stuff? Probably, yeah. They make a lot of Japanese prototype, and also if you want like bullet trains and things like that. Mm -hmm. N came out, I think, in the 1960s, or at least that's when it started getting kind of popular. And back then it didn't run so well and the stuff didn't look very good. But nowadays it's very detailed and the equipment runs really well and it's really matured as a scale. And um, I actually started out in N myself and I've always had a soft spot for it. N has a lot of the same advantages as Z in that you can do a lot in a small space. You could build a little oval layout in N scale in as little as maybe two by four feet. Nice. Yeah. Um, or again, if you have a larger space and you wanted to have scenery that really dominates the trains, you could do that. Um, again, it is a little on the small side, so um, not quite as bad as Z, but if, if you're one of those people who's intimidated by small parts or has trouble seeing small things, might not be the best choice. Yeah, in this case, I'd have to go from my normal 1.25 reader glasses up to about a 2 or a 1.75. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, that's... Um, that's in. Now, moving up from that, we have HO, which is 187th scale. And HO is by far the most popular modeling scale um, in the world currently. Yeah, we know about HO. Yeah, we, it's... We look at a lot of HO scale stuff. Yeah, it's something like 60 to 70% of the market. Um, I don't have any exact figures in front of me, but that's... It's a lot. Ba ballpark, yeah. yeah. It's, it's a lot. Um, there's more available in HO in terms of variety of equipment and things like that than any other scale. Um, also, it's probably one of the cheapest scales. I mean, not that there aren't expensive models, but um, N and HO, because they're popular, the prices tend to be a little lower than some of the others uh, on average. Or some of the other scales, as they get more obscure, they also tend to get more pricey. Yeah, because there's fewer people making them, right? Right, so. right. Um, so there's that's a, a consideration. Um, HO, you could build a, an oval layout and maybe as little as four by eight feet. Mm -hmm. um, some people have built it a little smaller. It kind of depends on how tight you want your curves to be. But that's a reasonable size if you wanted to run. Most equipment would probably run on that. And it's a good compromise between something that's big enough to see the detail and yet small enough to still be manageable. And so, you can really see the details and really detail out these cars a lot, as we know from watching your models. Right. Right. Um, HO is what I actually do most of the time, and I like it for that reason, because you can really see the detail, and uh, you know the models really can look just like a real train, just smaller. That's probably why a lot of other people like it as well. So moving on from that, we have O, and O is 148th scale, which also happens to be a popular scale for aircraft modelers. If you've uh, had a, a grandfather or someone from... You know, who I, I know my grandfather used to have Lionel trains. Mm -hmm. That's O. I think Johnny Cash did too. Yeah. <laughs> it's the big hands. It's the big train for little hands. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> o has been popular for a long time and uh, there's a lot available for it. Um, there are two different kinds of O scale, though, you have to uh, remember. There's three rail O, which is like the Lionel. Which is, three rail means that there's a third rail running down the middle of the track. Um, there's also two rail O, which is more realistic, and that's more popular with people who like, you know, really s trains that look like real trains. And you really can't mix the two because the electricity doesn't work the same. Um, they're wired differently, and so you pretty ha much have to go one way or the other. Mm -hmm. um, there, um, sometimes it's just a matter of what kind of wheels they have on them. Like this is a three rail car, but. Um, if I wanted to convert it to a two rail car, I'd just have to get different wheels for it, basically. Otherwise, it's the same. Okay. But they're they're built to the same ratio. It's all the same scale. It's just a little different. Now, because a lot of the three rail O uses really extremely sharp curves, um, you could probably do an O scale layout in as little as maybe five feet wide. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, it's getting to the, a stretch to put it out on a single table, but you could probably do something around the room or you, or set it up on the floor. Or a big table, right? A big I table, mean, yeah. I mean, yeah. if you, you'd have to have a pretty big table. I, I, I don't know that I would do that personally, but you, you could. 
if you have a big room, you could put a big table in it. That's or... true. You could. So, um, O definitely has its adherence. And, um, one of the things about the larger scales too, is they tend to get a little more durable. Mm -hmm. So if, you know, you have like little kids or something who are going to be rough with it, um, these will hold up a little better than some of the smaller scales. I think that's what Johnny Cash meant by the big train for little hands or right. whatever. Yeah. Right. You got to, when they get to be this big, you have to kind of start trying to hurt them. You know, <laughs> it's, not, it's <laughs> like, give me a hammer, it, Dan. I'll yeah. make it, I'll scar it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I know you, that's what I mean. You're running over with my car. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but anyway, um, so that's, that's O. And then moving up from that, we have G. G. And now G is a little complicated because there's actually several scales that they call G. This particular car is built to one thirty second scale. Is that a is that a standard gauge G? Is that or is that's it a narrow? standard gauge G? Okay, that's okay. what I thought. That's what I'm looks... talking about. I don't want to get into complications with gauge. We'll do that in another yeah. episode. Sorry, okay. I know a little bit. Of, I know just enough to ask questions to get me in trouble. Right, right. So we'll save we'll save that topic for another um, episode. But um, anyway, regardless of of scale, most G scale models are built to about this size. Mm -hmm. Okay, they're all kind of a similar size, and um, these are really mostly used in garden railroads, right? Outside, and they're built to be able to hold up being used outside. Uh, you know, basically in the dirt and in the sun and all that. So they're pretty robust and. So a lot of people like them for that reason. Um, some people do put G scale indoors, uh, but usually you see it outside because um, you really need a lot of space for it. So um, the other thing to th think about is if you're trying to figure out like what scale do I want to get into, if you're thinking of a budget, H O and N will be your best bang for the buck because there's more stuff available and there's a bigger market. So the prices tend to be a little lower. Like I said, there are still models that are very expensive in H O and N, but you can also get some less expensive ones that actually work pretty well. Um, as you start to move out from there in either direction towards Z or toward O or, or G, the prices tend to be a little higher. So just another thing to think about. Um, it's really a matter of personal preference, what you like and, you know, some people really like the big trains. Some people like little trains. It's just kind of a, you know, what works best and for your own situation. But anyway, hopefully this gives you some idea of, of some of the different scales. Actually, uh, let me cut you off there for a second. I've seen other scales, though, like S or something like that. Do you, like, yeah. this isn't everything, right? No, I this mean, isn't this isn't everything. These are just some of the more popular ones. Um, S scale is between HO and O. Oh, okay. Um, it's 164th. So the models would be a little bit bigger than this, but a little bit smaller than that. Mm -hmm. S has got its uh, following, definitely. Um, it's not as popular as O or HO, but there are people that definitely like it. And um, it offers kind of some of the advantages of both. It's got some of the heft and weight of O scale, but it's not quite as big. So it offers some of the space advantages of HO. Mm -hmm. Um there's also one called TT, which is 1 to 120th, or 1 one twentieth scale. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of between N and HO. Not real popular in North America. Um, you don't see that very often, uh, at least not um, in this continent. Um, there's also double O scale, which is very popular in the United Kingdom, and that's 176. The models are actually very similar in H, or very similar to HO in size. Uh huh. Um, but that's a different um, different modeling scale. So, um, again, HO is more popular in North America and Europe and most other places. OO is something you see in the UK. Yeah. So, so it's something you say when there's something wrong, too, right? Yeah. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I have, I'm full of great information. Yeah. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> Anyway, um, and there are there are others too. You know, I mean, there's there's all kinds of modeling scales, but um, these are these are the ones you see the most if you go to a, like a hobby shop in in you know the U.S. or Canada. Yeah, you know, you're going to see mostly this. Yeah, I mean, this is this is probably this is probably all the scales 
that I think I've seen. Although I have actually, believe it or not, I've seen an S scale yeah. layout before. Oh yeah, and yeah. it looked so much like HO, but you're just, there's something wrong about it. You're like, wait yeah, a minute, it's just a little bigger. It's just yeah. a little too big. You know, like yeah. the tracks don't look right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, hey, um, you know, I hope this helps. And the whole idea behind this was to sort of get other people who maybe are not as advanced, you know, as Dan is looking at this stuff, uh, interested. Yeah. Or if you're just starting out and you kind of want some information just mm-hmm. in general about model railroading, uh, that's kind of what we're trying to do here. Yeah. So, um, that's the whole class 101 idea, right? Right. Or even if you're interested in, you know, maybe buying some trains for somebody else mm-hmm. as a gift or something like that. Um, you know, hopefully this might give you some information. Yeah. Probably the easiest or most likely bet is just go with HO if it's yeah, for that's somebody a, else. Yeah, that's a pretty safe bet for, yeah. for most. And that's probably why it's popular is because that's what most people do. Unless you want to torture them and get <laughs> yeah. something that they can't add to, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's like, here you go. If you want to, like, not not instill the rail railroad bug in a kid give him something that he can't get anything for and (laughs) it'll break real easy yeah (laughs) (laughs) sabotage it yeah okay probably not the best idea yeah probably not all right well hey uh listen if you have any comments about this or ideas of other topics we could cover that maybe are a little bit more basic than what we usually cover on our other programming put a comment in the section below and let us know what you're thinking yeah, and uh, you could el- you could also email it to us if you prefer to do it that way. I think probably the best email address to use for any correspondence with us usually is podcast at tsgmultimedia dot com, and uh, we're very interested in hearing what you think of this show and if you have ideas of other things that that we can cover on it. Yeah. Well, hey, you know this is it. This is our first ever model railroading one hundred and one, right. and well, I'm glad I was here, Dan. Yeah. I would wouldn't have wanted to have you you have to do it by yourself, you <laughs> yeah, know. Yeah. All right, then we'll talk talk to everybody later. Okay. <laughs>